Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. My name is Justin, and today we're going to talk about when you can expect to see the C8 Corvette on your local dealership lots. All right, so the C8 is here, guys, and so far it's very impressive. The one thing that hasn't been talked about a lot is when we can actually expect to see this car on the dealership lots. I've talked to a few different dealerships and two things remain constant, and that is the build date and when we're gonna actually see them on the lots. Now, before we get too much into that information, let's talk about something that was notably missing at the reveal, and that is the convertible C8 Corvette. There were a lot of rumors suggesting a spider style convertible coming early on, but it was a no-show at the reveal or so we thought. At the very end of the show, we got a sneak peek, if you will, at the convertible car, and sure enough, it is a spider style convertible. GM hasn't officially announced anything regarding the convertible yet, but these pictures were pulled out of their video at the end of the reveal, which obviously show the car in its very convertible form. Fans of the convertible are definitely gonna be pleased. It's nice looking, I'm not usually a huge fan of the convertible design, but the spider style setup is the best of both worlds if you need that true drop top experience. I would imagine we'll hear official confirmation of this from GM very soon, but I can't help to wonder why it wouldn't have been shown off at the same time as its target top brother. It could be that there was additional tests that were needed to be done, or more likely they didn't have the specs finalized on the weight, price, etc. With the convertible typically starting at about $5,000 more than the base, they may have wanted to focus specifically on the fact that the C8 Stingray was going to cost under 60 k without having a caveat to the convertible model. Either way, it looks fantastic. I can't wait to actually see it in the flesh, so to speak. The convertible option will obviously forego the see-through window in the back due to needing some of that extra space to store the convertible top. Odds are good it wouldn't be as pretty as the coupe through that window, so GM decided to lose it for the drop top models. GM also just released a video teasing the convertible and the C8R option, which are both supposed to be revealed this fall. Here is that teaser video. If you are one of those who like and enjoy driving, you owe it to yourself to try this car. It looks pretty awesome. That C8R sounds insane. I can't wait to see what this thing is actually able to do on the track. But anyway, guys, let's talk about availability for the coupe model. As I said earlier, I've spoken to a few different dealerships about the build dates and when we can actually expect to see them on their lots, and the answers were always the same. Production is gonna start in December of this year, and we'll start seeing them on the lots in January 2020. For those of you out there who have to get one as soon as you possibly can, you could actually have it as early as January 2020, and it's a lot closer than I originally expected. I made a video about four months ago talking about the December production date, so that was always kind of what I figured. But I figured the delivery would be March or April at the earliest. GM's putting this thing out in January, so we're not even six months from actually seeing this car on the lots. GM has mentioned they want to build as many of these cars as possible, as fast as possible, and it seems like that's exactly what they're doing. They are getting this car to the end user as quick as they possibly can. Now, if GM stays true to that word and they build as many as fast as they can, we're gonna look at very little, if any, dealer markups, but we're also gonna look at very poor resale value. Typically, the Corvettes don't necessarily have the best resale value, but if GM's gonna pump them out as quick as they possibly can, that may actually drop that resale even faster. But either way, guys, I'm excited. I can't wait to get my hands on a C8 Stingray and really get to see it in person. Better yet, I can't wait to drive one. Next piece of information actually comes from the CorvetteBlogger.com, and they specifically report on an article talking about Taj Jukter and how he recently mentioned that there will be no manual transmission in the C8 Corvette. 
Now, for any of you out there who watch the channel often, you know I'm a big fan of the manual transmission, and it's sad to see it go, but this is Tad's Jukter, big guy at GM, definitely saying it's not happening. It's unfortunate, it's not something that I'm overly pleased about, but it was gonna happen someday, and I guess now's the day. Jukter goes on to say that only about 15% of the C7 Corvettes were outfitted with the seven-speed manual transmission, and he also said, quote, Every year it goes down, 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 down. Taj apparently said specifically Chevy was not able to find anybody who was willing to manufacture a manual transmission for the new mid-engine Stingray. That's the biggest reason it didn't happen. It's kind of interesting because the CorvetteBlogger.com goes on to say that, ironically, this trend with the Corvette being purchased in higher quantities of automatics than manuals is the exact opposite that they see over at Porsche with the 911 GT3s, they're saying two out of three buyers of the 911s are still choosing manuals. That's pretty funny because Porsche has a specifically designed dual clutch transmission that shifts incredibly fast, and a lot of the buyers are still choosing manuals. Now I know why that is, but it's interesting to actually see the numbers. One thing that Taj said while talking about the new dual clutch transmission option in the C8 Corvette that's a little bit worrisome is when he started talking about figuring out ways to cool it. He said there was a ton of complexity around it and that was one of the equations they had to solve. Now, for any of you guys who don't know, the Z06 C7 had some cooling issues, especially in the automatic version and odds are good the dual clutch transmission here is going to produce a lot of its own heat and hopefully gm has found a way to fix that but basically don't expect a manual transmission in the c8 it's a sad day but like i said we all knew it was coming the next piece of information is actually pretty interesting the new 2020 corvette stingray base so non-z51 is going to come with michelin's all season tires it's been a long time since i've seen a set of all season tires on a corvette at least from the factory and gm is doing it for the base model non-z51 you're getting all season tires now what's even more interesting is that they are all season run flat tires and again it was tad's jukter that was explaining that more customers than ever are saying that they'd like to drive three seasons on the same tires so GM made it happen. The tire that the base model is going to get is going to be the Michelin Pilot Sport All Season 4 tires, which I've actually read really good things about. Apparently, there was an actual goal of reaching the 1G of lateral grip with the All Season tire, and they've come very close to that. GM working with Michelin has been able to make it to 0.95G with the C8, but a lot of people are speculating that after the Stingray's chassis calibration is completely done, they will hit over 1G with the C8 and an all-season tire. That's pretty impressive whenever you consider what you're giving up with an all-season tire, which is typically that ridiculous stickiness that you get with the summer tires, and you're also getting a tire that will last a lot longer. And if you can hit 1G, with the all-season tires, it starts to really make you wonder, what are we using the summer tires for? And why are we spending so much money on them? Michelin's team has actually been quoted saying, it doesn't make the compromises that the summer tire will make when the temperature drops below 40 or 50 degrees, especially if it's wet. They're also saying it behaves like a summer tire in balance and progressiveness at the limit, yet it offers two to three times the grip of the Michelin summer tire in the snow. Basically, it kind of sounds like GM and Michelin together have found a way to get us the best of both worlds, which is always a big plus as far as I'm concerned. For a while now, the Corvette has come stock with run flat tires, typically Michelin brand. And the biggest reason is because the Corvette doesn't have a spare tire option. And because of that, you need to have a way to get the car home if you were to hit a nail or a glass or whatever it may be. This option has always been interesting in my opinion. I've never personally had to use this option, but it is nice to know that it's there. And now we'll also have that option with the new Michelin all season tires that are coming on the base C8 Corvette. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, smash that thumbs up button. If you have any questions at all, drop them in the comment section down below or email me horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I have loads of C8 and C7 content coming, so be on the lookout for that. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.